an ancient practice that first got worldwide attention thanks to the Oscar-winning documentary The Cove, every year fishermen in the Japanese village of Tai Chi force some 500 bottlenose dolphins into a cove where they're slaughtered for meat or sold to aquariums. The practice is frowned on here in America, and now the U.S. ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy, has weighed in. It's horrible to watch. Japanese fishermen round up hundreds of dolphins, forcing them into a small cove where they can't get out. Fishermen then string nets, pushing the dolphins closer and closer together until they can grab them individually, selecting some for sale, but most for slaughter. Sea Shepherd conservation the activist the Melissa Sagel was on site for the slaughter for the third year in a row. These dolphins are wrangled and wrestled into the killing cove where they have sustained multiple injuries. The local government where Taiji is located puts quotas on the kills and defends the practice, saying it's much like animal slaughter for food here in the United States. But Siegel says the dolphins suffer. These dolphins do not die immediately. It takes up to 20 to 30 minutes for these dolphins to die where they bleed out, suffocate or drown. In a controversial move, U.S. Ambassador to Japan Caroline Kennedy yesterday tweeted out, deeply concerned by inhumaneness of drive hunt dolphin killing. The mayor of Taiji says simply, we have fishermen in our community and they are exercising their fishing rights. Joining me in the newsroom is Regina Asmutis Sylvia of the Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society. Welcome, Regina. Thank you. And joining me in the newsroom is Regina Asmutis Sylvia of the Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society. Welcome, Regina. Thank you. What is it about this practice that is so upsetting to us Westerners? They like. And joining me in the newsroom is Regina Asmutis Sylvia of the Whale and Dolphin Conservation Society. Welcome, Regina. Thank you. What is it about this practice that is so upsetting to us Westerners? They liken it to slaughterhouses. It's the same. It's part of the part of the food chain. Um, well, it's not. It's not the same, and it's not the same. You're taking wild animals out of a population. You're taking sentient, intelligent animals, and you're causing population level impacts as well as the fact that we know that these animals are at a, a very different level of intellect. Um, so it's, it's certainly not the same. And I don't think that it has the same historical value that's being said as well. It started in the 1930s. It's not something that's a longstanding historical tradition. They say it's well, the number one tradition, but also part of the fishermen's livelihood and that they have a quota each year. So well, since this it, thing started, they say they've killed about 18,000 dolphins. It's a self-appointed quota. Um, by Japan, so it's a little bit hard to really s evaluate that in any realistic level because we can all appoint whatever quotas we want to anything. Um, you know, they, they on average take about a thousand animals a year, and, and what's also troubling is that I think blackfish has brought a lot of attention to the issue of captivity. Um, these animals are, are largely ending up in captivity, so what you see in blackfish is where captivity, what happens to the animals in captivity, this shows you how they get there. And it's really disturbing to think that there's this slaughter going on and these animals being removed. They live in family groups and pods that are really reliant on each other. They pass on culture to each other. Um, they learn from each other. So it's not all genetic instinct. And you're taking these animals out of the population. You're, you're really having a huge impact. And they're ending up in zoos and aquaria around the world for, you know, human entertainment. Some of these animals fetch as much as $80,000. So is that part of it? They, they claim that they're calling out the most attractive ones, the ones that have some unusual characteristics, and selling them to marine parks mm -hmm. around the world. Is, is that also, because it's 
part of the economy for, for that island? It's, well, that's, I mean, that's the motivating factor. Fewer and fewer of the animals are actually being eaten in Japan. There's mercury level issues that are of concern. So the driving force for this in the drive hunts really isn't about, you know, the need for it or the consumption for it. It really is an economic factor that they can sell these animals and more and more are getting sold to different facilities internationally um, because they do make money having people come in and, and see them. So it's not, I mean, it's hard to say that this is a long-standing important historical tradition. Whaling was at one time in our country. It's not anymore, and there's reasons for that. So I'm not really sure that you can just hold on to a tradition because you once did it. Now, they're claiming that they have a more humane way of slaughtering these creatures. They're going to pull them onto the beaches and drive something through the spine so they won't be drowning in the water. Does that make well, it better? <laughs> they, it, we have, if you, if you go to our, our website at whales.org, you can see the video, and I, and I warn you that it's disturbing. Um, and actually, we've had vets do an evaluation. We published a paper on that video showing that their new method, which they say is more humane, would be something that wouldn't even be allowed at slaughterhouses here because it's so inhumane. It's a, it's a, it's a slow and painful death. And, and in fact, what they do is they drive a stake into the spinal column um, and then they plug the blowhole and so that it suffocates at the same time that it bleeds out internally. Um, that's a way to make sure that the blood doesn't end up in the coven. People aren't seeing the red blood there to photograph it anymore. So it's, it's actually worse, I think, than what they were doing before. In truth, most of us wouldn't have known anything about this if it were not for the Oscar-winning documentary, mm -hmm. The Cove, which was shot actually in 2009. Yeah. And since then, this has gotten a tremendous amount of attention. By the way, it happens more than once a year. It's just that this year is kind of the... It, it happens every year from, a, it starts September 1st through April, um, sometimes a little bit mm -hmm. longer. Um, so for a good portion of every year, this goes on. Um, and, it, and it has, like I said, since at least the 30s. Is it just happening there or is it happening other places around the world? I think the, the probably the, the pinnacle of the drive hunts are, are happening in Taiji, uh, but there's certainly drive hunts that happen in the Faroe Islands that are mostly for human consumption. Mm -hmm. And then there's also um, places that what we refer to um, in our organization is, is bush meat hunts where they're, they're taking and driving and killing dolphins simply to use as fish bait um, in different parts of the world. So th it does happen, but I think with the, the sort of intensity and it, the sort of uh, mechanism for this to be an avenue to captivity mm -hmm. really is, is Taiji sort of the, the capital of that kind of stuff. What did you think of Caroline Kennedy weighing in? She's the ambassador to Japan now. I think it's amazing. I mean, I, I, I think that no matter how much work we do, um, the more that we can get this out in the public and the more that we can make it understandable across the board and have people step up and say things, Yoko Ono, um, some, some of the Hollywood celebrities are saying things, Carolyn Kennedy, uh, the Br British um, ambassador. I mm -hmm. think that the more people that can call attention to it, the better. All right. Regina, Esbuni, Sylvia, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.